I have 15 minutes to talk about 11 albums from the band that has one hell of a history in their original run. They released nine studios and the greatest hits or best of, and a farewell that changed from like southern rock all up to bluesy jazz. You know what I'm talking about? You know we're talking about the Doobie Brothers. So without further ado, let's get going. And today we're going to start off with the debut album. This is a great album. I mean, just phenomenal all the way through. It's very simple. If you're used to their later work, like songs like China Grove, what's in the music, you know, that big sound. This one's very different. The original lineup, three or four guys have been with the band for a long time. Uh, John Hartman, Tommy Johnson, and Pat Simmons. He leaves after this album because the next album they wanted to make it sound bigger, fuller, and that is because it's Toulouse Street, arguably they're one of the best lineups they've had in my mind. The addition of Tyrone Patterson and one of these guys is the extra percussionist slash drummer to give them that bigger sound. Now, Toulouse Street is really what gives them that unique Doobie Brothers sound that we all know, like, uh, listen to the music, rocking down that highway, Jesus just all right with me, um, White Sun, Cottonmouth, it's a great album, and uh, it does have a kind of a unique <laughs> gatefold, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so, after that, they ranted up even more new kind of things like that with Captain and Me. Another great album. Um, I think it's maybe same lineup, maybe the drummer swaps out, I'm not sure, but this one you have Long Trend Run and China Grove, Natural Things. Um this is a another good album. Solid all the way through, I like it a lot. And it is a gatefold. Woohoo! Yep. Again, you can get more of that country western rock, southern rock vibe that they were originally known for. On um, the next one, they you see the addition of uh, Skunk Baxter, Jeff Skunk Baxter. I think he makes an appearance on here, like uh, additional stuff. Now they're experimenting a little bit more, but this one, my mind, is more southern rock than anything else. What Run Spices and I'll have it. One of the members here in this picture, you can find a review of him on Facebook and said, Yeah, he's there at the show I was talking, so it's kind of cool. This album has uh, the biggest hit, one of which is um, Black Water. Really good song, great song, great album. Simple is just you can put it on and listen to kind of pat your knee to in a way I guess. Now then, this next album is the last album to feature longtime original vocalist Tommy Johnson, Stampede, because now they're starting to experiment a little bit more than they're used to. The songs are good songs. Don't wrong. I like the songs on here a lot. They're just Kind of in a way, you know, it looks very much like a country album, but in actuality it's not. And yes, Jeff Baxter is, uh, you know, a full on member, now that even more members, now it's getting kind of ridiculous in a way. Unfortunately, Tommy Johnson was replaced by a legendary vocalist in the Doobie Brothers, Michael McDonald, on the album Taking It to the Street. Notice it's very different, very bluesy, jazzy, R&B-esque. Tommy Johnson does have a few credits to his name on this album. I think it's on one side two, current loose, and a few other things, but my thoughts about the Michael McDonald era, it's good. Don't wrong, it is good, but it's not the doobies, you know, that classic 
sound that we all know and love, that rock. It's there, but not really. So after that, Burger Company decided to release the greatest hits, or the best of. The best of the Doobie Brothers, song from four of the five albums that they released, to illustrate all the way up to taking it to the streets, and it's a good album. Strong. If you want to get into the Doobie Brothers, you know where to go. Start off with this one, you're going to get a lot of the best hits. I don't know why they didn't put nobody on there. It's one of the best ones they've ever done, and they don't play it that much. They get Jesus Just Alright With Me, Taking to the Street, Trying to Grow, Rocking Down the Highway. Just some good ones. And, yeah. So, you know, from there, they released more albums. You know, with Michael McDonald, next one being Living on the Fault Line. It sounds the exact same as the other one, I'm not gonna lie. I don't mind it, it's there, it's just eh. If you can see it, it has like that, um, oh, the vibration patterns, what do you want to call them? Rector scale vibrations, whatever. Yeah, it's cool. It's a good album. It's solid. If you're into this this era of the doobies, personally, I don't care for it. It's there. I like it. I'm a collectionist, so the next one is a famous album of theirs, famous artwork, picture technically, and it's Minute by Minute. This one has oh, what a fool to believe. You know, what a fool you will use, or whatever. Good song, classic doobies. I hear this one a little bit more on the radio than the other Mike and McDonald's, but hey, oh well. It's there, it's good, mine's a little worn out and beat up, but hey. Antique store, five bucks. I'm not complaining. Yeah, I've seen it go for more expensive prices. I don't care, I have a copy. Yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. His last one saw the leave of original drummer John Hartman. I think Tyrone Peterson is on it, but this is the last uh, studio album from the original run. Released a year after the normal, like, you know, the Doobies 71, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So minute by minute, 78. This one was in 1980, I believe. And it's one step closer. Again, not a, a lot of differences. I don't mind it. Over one of these guys, I think it's McPhee here. I think that's him. He would be in the band for a long time when they reformed. He's still in the band today. When I saw them, Back in June of last year, see, Doobie Bros. <laughs> he was there, great guitarist, love a lot, but hey. And they did release one live album during this time. It's saw uh, the return of Tommy Johnson for his last two tracks. It was their farewell tour. Yeah. Just got him a copy, and it's a one big ass album, 17 tracks. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's kind of interesting to hear Mike McDonald sing. Like, listen to the music. These are just alright. I think how they do these legendary doobie songs with more R and B. I don't mind it. It's there. It's just eh. it's a gatefold, and it is a double album. So if you are interested in buying this. You will be, you'll get two of them. If you're having it, you're going to have to do four different sides. Okay, hold on. I did copy it so I can have a digital format of it. But yeah. Anywho, this has been a brief history of the Doobie Brothers. Now, Tommy Johnson does appear on the last two tracks Long Train Running and China Grove. He pretty much they go separate ways. He releases a few solo albums between the time he left in Stampede, like what, 75, 76. 
and they got back together in 1989. In 1989, they released Crisis, something like that, Circuit. I can't remember the name, but that's their 10th album, and there was a few others here and there periodically. The latest one, Southbound, has kind of a unique concept to it. They take country, famous country singers, like a Brad Paisley, Chris Young, stuff like that. I haven't seen Doobie Brothers song. Great album. I listened to it on YouTube. It's there. It's good. I just don't have any money for it yet, but I'm not complaining. I want to get it. Same time, I'm like, eh, it's one of those country I'd tell you to copy it and how to do it, but any of you, this is the history of the Doobie Brothers. I hope you like it. And also, keep rocking down that highway.